some long ideality in the uh, uh, in the MOSFET. The one thing I want, want to talk about is the so-called trestle variation. Now, if we reduce the gate length, you find the trestle voltage will reduce for the same process. You, you make different transistor, one millimeter, I mean, one micron, 0 0.1, 0 0.01, and then you measure the VT, you get this one. This is what we call VTH roll off. And this is a kind of short channel effect. When you go to shorter channel, it is more easier to turn on the transistor because the drain has a stronger control on the channel. Remember the transistor is the gate to control the channel. But when you are so short, the drain bias actually has control on the channel. The gate is too far away. Okay, so this is the short channel effect, right? And there's another problem. I don't know, I've deleted this. I don't know why it's still here. It's called the drink induced barrier lowering. This is for the same channel length. If I increase the gate voltage, and uh, increase the drain voltage, the transfer voltage will reduce. And this is due to the same reason. When I increase the drain voltage, it will have a better control. You try to pull down the barrier, right? The gate cannot stop it because it's too far away, right? I have a bad design of the device. Then you try to turn it on easier. So these are the two things that you want to uh, uh, be worried about in your design. We are not talking about this in this class, but this is a real thing. So I hope that you know this, right? Even in your interview or whatever. Drink induced barrier lowering, that is typical, okay? Can you guess which one is more problematic for a circuit designer? I think the left one. The left one? Yeah. Why? Because you see the industry trend, like for instance, for like circuit design, you, you have a shorter and shorter lens. Okay. And for the VPAs, actually you can control it, right? Okay. <laughs> so when I ask this question, what I mean is you already given a technology that is working. So when we design shorter channel length, we already have a working device. It won't let you do something very low. But yes, but within the same wafer, when you have a, some shorter device, it may go lower. So your worry won't be an issue. Uh, it's unstable again. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Hey, Professor. Yes, yeah. Professor, are you using are you using Wi-Fi now? I'm using Wi-Fi, yeah. Okay. Sometimes I had this issue, but I just disable my Wi-Fi and I use a wide internet wire that like the cutout disappear. Yeah, but I don't have nine internet. <laughs> my my my, uh, my my Wi-Fi was like far far away. Uh, it was be behind the, the the TV, and I'm in another room. Yeah, so sorry for that. My and my computer cannot take the nine. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay, so let's go back to the question. I'm saying this is not a problem because uh, you are given the technology already. So as a circuit designer, you already know how low it is. Uh, it is. It won't give you something too low that is not working for you. Okay, so for a circuit designer, right? For a circuit designer, the most, the biggest problem is the dipole because it's voltage dependent, right? If you already know that the voltage is going to be low for a certain gate length, then you just plan for that. You design your circuit so that you take this low voltage. But for dipole, it really depends on the operating voltage. Uh, you can say that you already know what is the operating voltage, but sometimes you really don't know how it's reached during the circuit operation. So this is more problematic. Okay. 
uh, yeah, because of time, maybe I will just stop here. Uh, we are almost done. Then uh, next class, I'm going to talk about the wires. Okay. Any questions? Professor, for mid -sem, we'll be having up to Thursday's class, right? Up to Wednesday, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. sorry, Wednesday class. Right, yeah.